हे गाइस आई एम निशांत वेलकम यू ऑल टू साइबर नाइटिको सो टुडे वी विल बी बिल्डिंग दिस एवन क्लोन यूजिंग नेक्स्ट जे एस एंड फायर बेस एज डेटा बेस सो लेट मी शो द फंक्शनैलिटी ऑफ दिस एप्लीकेशन वी कैन से एड अ न्यू नोट दिस टाइटल एंड टेक्स एडिया विल अपियर वी कैन एड द टाइटल हेयर लेट से टाइटल वन देन द टाइटल डिस्क्रिप्शन सो लेट से हेलो this is title 1 save note so this is the basic functionality we can edit the field or delete them let's add second note title or let's say let's say let's say note 2 so we need this so let's add hello from note 2 we can make it bold or we can add italic text so let's say hello from note to italic so just add italic text styling here we can add a list as well so let's save it now let's see what we get so you see we are getting this text of hello note to in italic and in bold that we pre previously typed If we click this edit icon here, it is coming here with title. We can change it, or click this. This should be changed as well. If we click edit, so let's make it note to, let's make it a list here. So this should be list item one, list item two, list item three, and then update note. So this note has been updated. With note two and all the list items here, we can delete them. If you click this delete icon, and if you click delete on this second note, it will be deleted. And all of these data are getting saved here in Firebase, and deleted when we delete the fields from here. So without wasting any time, let's get right into this project and build it. So let's start. first of all we will create <coughs> a react app not a react app this time we will create a next app so to create a next app we need this command npx create next app latest or yarn create next app so let's create uh, a next app using this command it will ask us the name so let's say evernote clone enter now it's installing all the packages from internet using npm so let's wait for it so you see our app has now been installed so let's just navigate into that folder evernote clone you see here we have different files so we have pages public folder styles so first let's look into this package json file just like react we have this scripts to start to create a build to uh what is this okay delete this okay so we have to using to start or to run the project we have dependencies here and dev dependencies so we will install anything we want and it will show up here in the list then we have pages which contains our index So let me start this project first. Then let me let me show you. To start the project, we can just say npm run dev, and if we enter this command, let me enter npm run dev. So I guess we all now you will all able to see it. So if we press npm run dev. this dev command we will trigger it and it will generate or it will start our project here so let's do it enter press enter let me zoom my photo zoom out and put it here at the last at the bottom left or left bottom fine then we have to do is just go to this localhost 1000 to see our output 
so this is now deflecting this boilerplate code which is con which contains all these tags head uh, main p tag dev so we have this head here called create next step so let's just remove everything inside this main okay main fine then we have the footer here so we can also remove the footer or and then save so we have basically three sections so first is the head so let's just let's just make the head to be uh, ever not ever ever not clone c l o n and it will be reflected here at this address top address or whatever it is called i am forgetting because we learned all that in our school so let's just make this content to be of the description to be this is and ever not clone save then we have the main section here we can write anything we want here so let's make this h1 and give this h1 some tag i don't know what i'm saying i am saying in this main we have h1 now so let's me let me give a heading so let's say ever not clone and you see it is now here so it is following the styles of this styles dot main so let me open this styles and home module dot css home dot module dot css so it is reflecting this main class name here styles dot main so if you remove this ever not clone title will go up to the top so I'll remove it and then save you see then 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 we have this footer code and all these so let's just comment out this footer because we will use use it at the last fine then okay so we don't need this all the classes here so remove them we only need okay remove all okay wait a second okay we need the footer footer so just remove title and all these things here fine so in this main class name we can declare our classes and styles first we need some font so open google font oh, sorry and let me copy all these fonts here so i have selected two fonts previously already so let me open sorry let me import into this file called global css so it will be globally used everywhere so we have imported it so close it now so in this main we have h1 so to target this h1 class in the main styles we will just say main then h1 and we will gen use any font family so let's me use this roboto and sans serif as default so you see it now changed if we remove this font family it will go back to that default font but what is the default font so default font is i think this if we remove this font family from here and if we remove this here as well let's see we are writing some other font that i don't know so revert it back this font robot here then we have to make sure it is in the center so just say text align center it's now in the center here fine fine so what we have to do now is so we have the title now h1 then we need a components folder so in this pages create a folder called components and let me make this as evernote evernote dot js fine 
let me create a functional component here so we need to import nothing we need to import nothing so i guess we don't have any electricity right now but i can get into record video wait a second so how 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 okay this is the default method to create one component so let's make it ever not and just export it here then all the data we will have is will be contained inside this return and inside this div okay not like this not like this so return this function here so let's import this component into our index.js so import ever note from components ever note then we will just return it like this just like we do in react you see we are getting this text called welcome to next.js if we remove this it will automatically disappear so now we have a component here which says nothing it's just ever note code we can do this like this also so you just say export default function ever note and we don't need this export at the bottom so save it and it will still the still will be the same so we can say here blah, 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 blah. it will show up here in this text so remove this and let's start building the rest of the things so now the power is back so let's continue so we need uh, two columns so let's say okay i don't think we need this evernote.js so just remove this and create one component for the left side to create a node so let's name this um okay i guess i did something wrong put it back put it back okay so here we will create two columns one row and then two columns so let's create them so inside this div word just make this div a class name of let's say uh, 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 main or main container container save this then inside let's try to give this a uh, main container okay let's create a file here called evernote.css just and here we will just say main container but but i think class name here will not work class name will work but we have to use in this manner styles.container but let's check whether it works or not because i don't know so here i have this main container okay let's type something here okay okay wait i think we have to give this okay so let's say display of flex then justify content no justify content flex okay just let's go with flex right now and here we will create two divs two divs one will be on the left so just make this as okay what is happening p tag left and the second one should be right so i will just add here r i g h t right so we have now left and right two texts so in this main container we will just make flex direction to be row okay i am always confused between row and columns so i guess wait a second i think it's not working so we have to import this styles file into our function evernote.js so we just say import what is what this says so just say this from just go back let's choose the path it's 
one step backward and evernote.css save them global css cannot be imported from files other than your custom app home.module.css global css it, um, i think we have to name it like this so home what is the home here let me research a little bit so let's make or rename this as like this so we will just say evernote dot module dot css okay it will work now because we have changed the evernote to evernote dot module dot css so it is now working and we have to just say styles dot main container container is not defined okay just make this as this okay 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 main container we don't have to use this main container so if we check let's say we have container here and here we have the styles dot main hmm. i guess we have to use single line or in camel case class names for this to work make this as row now they are both on the same row this left and right fine so the next thing we need is to separate or give them a little bit space so we can just give this div a class name of left not like this we can just say styles dot left and here we will say styles dot right r i g h t here let's make the styles or we can do it like this also styles dot main okay 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 so styles dot left and right so in this main container we can do it like this as well or i think let's see if it works or not because let's experiment here so we have the styles dot main container and inside we have styles dot left so let's give it a left here and let's see if it works or not so in this left we need some margin 20 pixels and i guess right also but i don't see i don't think it works like this and in this right we also have to use the same and we can do this like this also so dot min contain dot left and it should be as dot main container dot right see it's still it is still the same if we remove this it works or not okay it will still work fine so they are now working fine so inside main container we have left and right fine so we have chosen this so on the left we will have the option to create a new list and on the right we will have the text area to change the text and add the text so let's create a button here first so button this should be add a new node see and on the right we will have this let's make this blank for now so styles dot left okay make this margin 10% or 10 px or i think we should use rem 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 units so if we it will be useful later i don't know what i'm saying okay fine so now we have a button here so let's 
style is button so class stem should be styles dot button okay i guess okay let's try this time like this down so let me add this button class name and let me make this a little bit bigger so padding 20 pixels hmm it will not work so we can try to increase the width as well also width 100 pixels i get it is not working so we can just say like this also so button should be styles dot button you see now the width has been decreased so let's make it 200 pixels and give it some height of 40 px but we have to use rem unit so let's change it to rem so 10 rem let's see 10 is less 15 okay 15 is too much so let's stick with 10 and height should be 4 rem not 4 let's make it 2 okay we have some height now and some width also let's make a cursor to be pointer if you hover this now our cursor will be pointer then let's change the background color so to uh, to see the colors we can head over to colors and fonts.com it contains all the colors all the colors and the gradients and all these so let's choose some gradiented color so to use gradiented color background in the button we can just say background image we can just say linear type linear gradient and we will add the first color which is this color here and then the second color this one from our colors and fonts website so add them here save and you see the button color has now been changed let's add some few more style name which will be border as none so border is now hidden or we can make the border to be like this also so 1px solid and let's make this purple border you see it now it's now great looking button and color should be white smoke but it's too light so leave the color we have this button okay let's try this background this gradient here which is greenish so we have to change the background image sorry not background image border color so make this as this green if you make this as 2 or 10 it increases so let's try 5 5 is too much 3 3 is fine so we have now this looking this button here if we try the color now it will be still the same because we need darker darker gradient so um, let's just use some solid gradient here which is 001 so just see we don't need need linear gradient we need background color this hex code 001 we don't need the border now remove them remove it or leave the border and make this as 212121 then we need the color of white to make it look like a white text fine it's now here then we need to add okay where is that file which is home module so let's add the font family of which font family in global we have this font of so we had roboto and we had super mercado so let's add it font family super mercado I guess I have to import this here also. So if you open this global.css and if I import this into our ever.cs file, oh, 
okay let me open fonts or google.com and let's see what is the okay we have this one family of super mercado one not just super mercado so replace it and it will reflect now add a new note it's hard to read but it's still fine so we can increase the size of the button so let's make this as 15 pixels and this should be 4 rem or 3 3 is fine font size should be now greater 20 pixels or 1 rem 1 rem is fine so let's make this 1.5 so now, now it looks much better we have this click a new node button now on the left side if we remove or just make this with 10 rem it will break okay 15 is fine but since we are developing for a mobile version right now so let's make this the button in the center not in the left so to make the button in the center we don't need this flex direction just say flex not direction let's make this justify content center now it's in the center okay let me add one more thing here border radius of 15 pixels to make it rounded so now it looks much better much 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 better if we remove this margins the margin is now lifted from this button and it's now in the center but i guess we have to use a margin top all only so margin top 1rem so now we have this Evernote clone title, title and this button of add a new node. Now let's add some functionalities in our app. So what we have to do is, so, 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 hmm. What should we do now? So when we click this button called add a new node, a function should be triggered. So let's create one function. So let's say add node. and map this function to this button so on click of the button we will get this function triggered so button so 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 on click this function let's add a simple alert now to see whether it works or not so let's say add note so if we click the button let's see what happens so we see we are getting this alert called add note add note fine so what we have to do here is so if you click this button called add note a text should appear at the bottom so let's create a text field here so we can just say input and make it a self closing tag so now we have this input here and just say placeholder to be enter the title save now we have this input of enter the title here but we have to make it in the bottom so we have to use this property called uh, flex direction of row or I guess column okay now it's column but this is now on the left most part so we can just text align center as well and remove the justify content it will still work so you see it now works we have now the div in the center the most difficult challenges in css give this uh, input a class name of let's say styles dot add input make sure this class name that you added it is a single line or a single word not a multiple word or with hyphens so you will just say add input let's make the width to be 15 rem and the height to be 4 rem 4 is too much so let's try 2 2 is fine okay so i guess 
input is now defined here so we have to add this font family here to change so let's add roboto font not this super mercado one so add roboto font here fine so we need to add a few more things here so sir first is the uh, outline make this none so if we click this we are not seeing any outline here but we can make the border too so border okay if we click this or we if we focus this we should see a border so we will just say add input focus okay where is the focus class name or focus selector focus let's make the border border one pixels solid let's make this red just for testing if we focus this the border is now red but if we unfocus it now changes to black so let me grab a red color or a proper color for this clone and we have to make this more than one to make it stand out or let's make it three let's see three is fine you can use your own designs or own colors fonts and everything so if you click this you see we have this brownish color here okay but i guess we have to make this a little bit more give this a little bit more height and so now what we have to do is let's change the placeholder text not text its position so let's search for i don't know how to do this how to not lose body fat how to change placeholder place holder position in css let's see how to do this okay we have to use this class called or selector called placeholder so let's see if it works or not okay it is input type okay i guess we have to use this here or with this add input class name so add input then this text or class name okay now it works we don't need background and the color so remove them we don't need italic text remove this as well or we can make it bold so if we hover okay it's not working doesn't matter so we have the font size 1 rem so let's increase the font size okay okay we have to add this in the focus as well the same class name of uh, same placeholder okay it will not work okay not work not work fine so if we click this the cursor is now on the start so we can remove this we get in the font size to 3 rem 3 is too much 2 is also too much try 1.5 Okay, one point five is fine. We can type anything here, but on the focus, we have to change it as well. So copy this focus class name, and we can just say this placeholder. If we save, selected is not a pure container. If we try it like this, but not working. So let's see how to use. two selectors says two selector at once multiple selectors but it is jake query we need it in the css grouping multiple selector in css hmm we 
this let's try the css tricks here okay we can also use id okay but that will not work in our case i guess we have to add padding here okay yes we have to add padding in the class name of add input and this focus so we can add our text now we have to remove padding from here to make it okay now it works fine also change the font size in add input to 1.5 rem and remove the font size from this or just make it okay let's do one thing so defaultly our font will be one if we click it will be more than one so let's make this 0 0.5 pixels click this it will not increase because i guess it doesn't work like that okay i guess we have to add the font size of 1.5 in focus so if we remove this and it now increases dramatically exponentially so make this as one rem click this and font size will increase and let's make the behavior to be smooth okay leave that we will do it later so now we have the text input into the title when we click this it is increasing okay now let me okay let's just search for it so how to to make css smooth animation smoother okay smooth as a butter so okay 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 we have rotation scale opacity mm, i had a function name i i mean a class name i am not remembering it so i guess we have this is in is out animation timing function but i am not using animation so let's try this here if we refresh okay it will not work fine leave it we will say that later but when i will click this add a title button or input it is now zooming in the title now and now let's give this a border radius of something some amount let's say 3 rem 3 is too much 2 1 1 is fine Hmm. Border radius. Let's make this twenty. Okay, we have to use percentage. Twenty percent. Okay, wait, wait. Not border radius. Sorry, we have to use. Okay, wait, wait. I guess we have to use border radius. Two rem, not two one. One point five. Okay, it now looks fine change the padding to 10 now okay it looks much better now and here also in focus element make it 15 okay, 10 is fine here leave, leave it at 10 we don't need to input uh, input focuses so remove one and here let's change the border to some other color so let's make the color to be lightly a slightly a lighter color in add input so if we click this input focus this will change to a darker version or lighter version you see it changes but the font size is too much so just make this as a font of one let's make it 1.2 Okay, it now looks better so we have title now okay okay not this not this not like this so to create one to store this title state we need the we need one state so just import use state from react and we need to create one state here so const let's say 
नोट एंड सेट नोट यू स्टेट इट विल बी एन एम टी स्ट्रिंग आई विल जस्ट सेट द नोट टू दिस सो वी कैन जस्ट से ऑन क्ले ऑन चेंज इट विल टेक एन इनपुट पैरामीटर ऑफ ई सो लिट टेक एंड देन वी विल जस्ट स्टोर दिस इनपुट पैरामीटर इन सेट नोट यूजिंग द सेट नोट फंक्शन सेट नोट इट विल बी इक्वल टू ई डॉट टारगेट टारगेट डॉट वैल्यू फाइन इफ यू टाइप समथिंग हेयर लेट स्टार्ट टू कंसोल डॉट लॉग दिस वन सो वे विल सी वाट वी गेट कंसोल डॉट लॉग दिस नोट सो नो ओपन द कंसोल सिंपली एंड क्लियर इट सो लेट्स टाइप समथिंग यू सी वी आर रीडिंग इट हेयर दिस टेक्स्ट एंड इफ यू रिमूव इट विल बी ब्लैंक so remove console log no now so what we have to do now is when we click this button only then this if we click the button of add a new note only then this input title should appear or else it will be hidden so we need one more state a boolean state so let's make it is input visible and set input visible fine just make it a new state of false because initially we will have a false set it means this input very input visible will be false but when we click the button of add note this will be visible so let's set this now in this function of add note click the button it will trigger this add note function and then this set input visible will be turned to true then we have to map or we have to create a check here so if the input visible is true only then we will show this input here so just cut this div and put it in the first check this first curly bracket means it uh, it is the first curly bracket means the data inside or tags inside will only show if it is true this input visible or any conditions or any state i mean and here let's create one empty div for now save now let's clear or click this button called add a new node you see our input field will be will be visible now you see it is now visible here fine so if we refresh it will disappear automatically so let's add some text here so let's make this a p tag and let's say click or uh, add a new node just say this and give this div a class name of let's say new no, okay not like this styles dot new node and in this event dot module dot css we will just say new node and on the p tag inside it we will use this font called roboto so use this let's change some class name font size 16 pixels 16 is default so make it 20 so we have this text here if we click this it will disappear and we will see our title text here title input so i guess this is done so okay fine so what we have to do next is clicking this it will contain or it will make this input appear so i guess we need a button also so to a button so let's create a button to save the list so make this button or give this button title of not title placeholder placeholder of mm, 
सेव नोट ओके वेट एंड जस्ट मेक दिस सेव नोट ओके इट्स बटन आई एम एन इडियट फॉर यूजिंग प्लेस फोल्डर है बिकॉज इट विल इट इज मेन्ट फॉर इनपुट्स नॉट बटन सो सॉरी एंड इन द स्टाइल डॉट राइट वेर इट इज इट द क्लास नेम स्टाइल्स डॉट राइट दिस वन वी हैव टू यूज फ्लेक्स ऑफ डिस्प्ले ऑफ फ्लेक्स एज यूजल सेव एंड टेक्सट लाइन सेंटर वेट अ सेकेंड remove this right class name from here we will add it okay a string of right class name okay 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 i will just say dot right or let's change the class name here because it looks or it feels different so let's make this let's make this Style dot btn container. Remove this left and make this btn container. Then to write, we will add a class name of input con container. So make this as input container and give this margin top of one rem and so we have to arrange this input and the button row wise so the first thing here is we can just say display of flex justify content center then flex direction flex direction column so you see the save run button has now the width of 100% so give this div a class name this button class name of let's say styles dot save btn mm. and uh, let's make the css styling for this width should be let's make this width just like this add on button so add note add note add note mm, button this one width 15 rem and height 3 rem make this like this but it's not arranged in the center so i guess it is the result of using this okay where is that class name using this okay 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 using this flex direction so if we remove it will be in the center so i guess we have to use this property called text align center but it will not work uh, okay wait a second let's find a alternative to make it in the center so we can just use an br tag as well to break the line break the line but it will not work so just wrap it in a div and let's see what happens and this input to but it is not happening so let's say hmm, i guess tab is not a block level element it's a inline level element so this both are coming on the same line when this ends this starts so what we have to do how to make this at the bottom so let me see we have styles dot input container here input container just if i go into center is working if we use if we remove this and add flex direction column okay i do yes we do didn't need that because we are using div now fine so if we remove this divs or just revert back let's see what happens it will be on the left fine 
so add the diffs now fine so we need some margin in the save button at the top so just say margin top one rem fine okay we have to make the button a little bit smaller 12 10 fine and make this uh width to height to 2 rem fine it's now so we have the button here and the title <clears throat> so bear with me please now we need some styling for the button let's say like color and everything else so let's make the border or we have to use the cursor of pointer here then let's choose the color of something something background color so we don't need black so let's choose some color here let's try this one okay we are getting this red button here if we say color of white smoke the font size font color will change also we don't need what was the property this border in the button we don't need we have cursor okay we have to use this border of the same color of that background color just say this color background to hide this border or we can create the border of a little bit more darker color we save it okay i guess it looks fine this gray color so now what we can do is just say border radius border radius 50 percent okay it's not this 15 px okay it's now look it looks fine i am not focusing on the design i am just focusing on the functionality but i think we have to remove this let's remove this class name of or this p tag because i don't think we need it here you can leave it if you want so if you click add note this add title and save note button will appear automatically so let me format the code shift alt f on your keyboard so it so we have now the add note button and this titles here title input and save note button so let's create one more function called save note this will be triggered when we click our add note but save note button here so let me break this down on click this function of save note fine so we can console.log this note here open the console add something let's say a b c if we click save note you see we are getting this here this a b c text if we add d we will add we will get this here also a b c d so that's fine now i guess and now so let's say we have added a note here in this input and click save note now we need a state for an array or a array state so let's create it will be not here let's create it here to make it more readable so const let's make it notes array set notes array use state and array here fine then we will store all the notes here in this notes array so we can do it like this so we will store the previously added notes so just say notes array and the current node so add it here and if we console dot log or let's say 
Mm, it is the add field here. So let's create a new div here. And let's just map this. Or just console.log this. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Just let's just log uh, map this here. So nodes array dot map. But first we will check if it length if it lengths if its length is more than zero only then we will map it so if it is zero then we will just say nodes array nodes array dot map let's say nodes we'll say return and let's return some paragraph p tag and just add here nodes Okay, make this make this a single note dot notes then save so now let's try to add some notes here click add a new note let's add a note called note one add or save note you see we're adding this note one here we can add note two as well the next is na note two we can add the note three note four just like that now we have to do so if you click this add note button or save note button, the save note button, this note should be empty, set as empty. So we can just set note as empty string. And the, we will use this note state for this input and we will set the value. So value should be a note. So if you click add note five, click save note, you see the input of the this input element will now it's now empty <sighs> so that's now done now let's style these notes a little bit so let's make them in a grid so what should we do now we have to make it in a grid so 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 notes array we are mapping this so just say div and add this note here it will still be the same so we have to make this in a grid so we can add the p tag here also so add them here so in this div the blades in this div the parent div of note we will just say styles dot so note show notes and in this CSS file, we will just say show notes display will be grid and uh, display grid column or it's I think it is grid template columns auto 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 auto. So you now see we have now four autos auto is now repeating four times so we have a grid of four elements one two three and four one two three and four if we remove one auto this will be three so let's leave it at three because it looks great note one note two and note three if we add a note five or note six it will be in the sixth position you see and uh, now we have to give this div a class name of inner div so styles dot inner nodes then let's add the class name here so we have to wrap or create a border here it's a border one pixel solid okay solid let's make this two one two one two one it is black save so we have now the border let's add some gap here so grid gap grid gap uh, one px one is too much smaller let's try 10 okay 10 is fine also we need some margin of top so margin top 10 pixels or let's make it 5 rem 
okay this is now fine so i have note one to five here and we have all this smaller grid cards so let's make the border radius of 10 pixels to make it rounded and uh, okay just head over to materialevi.com okay leave this so let's add some gradient here and make this 2 okay 2 is fine make this 15 15 so we have now all these here add some add this robot font here <clears throat> now we have this fonts here note 1 note 2 note 3 note 5 if we add some other note it will be on the seventh position and so on hmm so i think what should we now do to style this let's think so i note 1 to 7 okay let's see some colors here <laughs> if I add this 008, what will happen? It's blue. I don't think it's blue. What color is this? I don't know. So if I remove the hex tag, okay, just leave it at 21211, which is black. Or we can do this like this also. So border top, border top 1px or 2px solid red so top border will be red but not the other borders so we can just make this as 5px to give a little bit more shadow effect here also it should be red you see so it has now some shadow effect but let's change the color of red so because red is looking too much brighter let's choose this rgb 2514646 and just copy this color and put this here fine now we have this color here and we can go a little bit lighter as well and here as well okay this now looks fine or what we can do is we can just match this color of this save note button here as also so just put it here so let me show you one more thing or let's do one more thing here so i have to add the colors manually so this color rgb 156 is repeating three times so let's use scss instead of css so just add npm i sas we will change the name of this css file to scss we will use sas which is the father of css in terms of features so let it let it install first so now let's use the sas in our project so first just we need to rename this module of scss sorry css to scss to make it in a scss format so i error i am getting so it is not getting loaded properly no shell no such file or directory okay fine so in this evernote.js we have to rename this css to scss then it will load you see it's now loading and what we have to do is create one variable for this color of 550f03 so let's create it we will just say star sorry dollar let's say the color name so let's say uh, dark red this will be this color and a semicolon and we can use this dark red in all our so we can use it here we can use this if we search it okay we all have this only 
at two places okay we have to use this color of rgb first so let's make this red one or dark red one oh any just paste the rgb format color here and we will just use the variable of dark red one if we search it let's say we have this here so rename this then we have at this is this add 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 these places so just add them here save and it will be it will be the same all right so what we have to do now is what we have to do so let's add one okay so in this note file sorry in this note we have to add one edit option so we have one we need to use one um, let's say we have to use some emoji or what is it called let's use some icon okay yes it's called icon so just go to react icons and we will install this library in our project so we'll just install it using this command npm install react icons save so install it and let's wait for it to install now let's use the icons in our project so we don't need this we don't need that terminal so delete that so we need to import the icon first so let's search for any icon here so let's search for edit icon so let's use this ai field edit so let's import it in our project first import ai field edit from react icons and ai so ai is for on design icons this icons then we will use it here in our input of uh, before the input wait a second let me see okay not there here so we will just say this ai fill edit and voila it's here so now we have to change the size of the icon to make it bigger size should be 30 30 fine and give this ai fill edit a class name of styles dot edit edit icon let's pick it and let's set the icon here so all i do all i want to do in this edit icon is cursor as pointer to make this pointer a cursor now and here padding of 10 pixels to make it uh, at a little bit more bottom so now we have the icons here of all the notes we can add notes so let's say note 8 or notes note 8 it's here note 9 it's here so we have all these icons and a grid of all the notes in an array so now let's install firebase so just install go to firebase.google.com here let's install it using a command called npm i firebase in our next project so we have to create a project first so just click here and get started or oh, i think we have to go to console okay we have to go to console and we have to create a project here so let's create it let's give the project name to be evernote clone continue don't need an analytics so remove that checkbox it's now creating our project in firebase so meanwhile what we can do is create a file called fire base 
con fake dot js i will show you why i created this file so wait for it so our project has now been created now i have to create the application so click this web button here and give this web app a name of ever note clone registered app so this is the command to install firebase that we just used here right now so we have to use all this configuration code here for our firebase to use the firebase so let me remove all these comments then it will be easier to show you so we are importing the initialize app from firebase app all these things these are our, our api keys auth domain project id all these things but this is the main part so we have to export our app here in order to work in order to firebase to work then we have to import this app into our uh, evernote.js so import app from firebase config you see it's automatically imported that's all now for now continue to console here now we have to use one more thing so we have to use the firestore database to store our notes and all the description of the notes so click firestore database here so we have to create a database first so create database and you see this is the firebase sorry firebase database rules so let me show you so it is only allowing if it is false so let's create the database enable it let me show you the rules after this what are the rules it takes some time meanwhile what we can do is create this okay we can import get fire store okay wait what is the command so from firebase fire store and i think we have to use get uh, fire store command function then we can create one database here so we have to also export it so just say export const database equals to get fire store and all this can add this config and config command in get fire store like this now we can use the fire store in our project here so let's click the rules now so let's see the rules now so i think we have to remove this if false and then publish now we can write it into our project so just click data now okay now we have to import this database as well so just import it data base now if we click uh, so you see if we refresh it's getting refreshed click add new node so let's add a node in our firebase fire store so how to do that so we need to create the database instance for instance first <coughs> so we will create instance of const db or database data base in stands or just say db instance equals to we need a few things so let's import a few things import uh, from firebase fire store so i think the first is the fire store i am forgetting mm -hmm. to create database instance let's check 
how to create the database instance fire base <clears throat> okay this is not the thing that we need okay 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 let's just search firebase firestore cloud firestore so we have to use the c documentation here so get started hmm, installed imported done all these things yes we have to add the collections first so col uh, import collections then we will just say collection and it will take the database so let's say that it let's make the database name first okay, not the name this database that we created into our config file so you see this is creating a database of get firestore just like we did here so just say database and let's add the database name here first so it should be let's say notes this should be the database collection name then let's import a few things as well. so so let's say add doc first this will be used to add document to our firestore from our app so you see we have uh, we are adding this add doc so let's add it here collection so let's say we are uh, have to add okay so we have to add this collection using this okay not this collection we have to use using add doc and inside add doc we have to pass our data so the, our data should be like this so note okay let me break this down so note will be just note and i guess that's all wait a second no that's not all so we are passing the name hmm okay let's try to con let's try to do this let's see what we get let's add the title here first let's say note one and just now right now we don't need to show our notes we are just sending the notes to firebase to comment out the notes grid so we can just say note one and click save you see we are getting some error here because something is wrong i am forgetting the syntax of add doc okay yes 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 so here you see we are adding the collection keyword and the database instance and the database collection name but here we are not adding here we are storing it in the db instance so we have to pass this as well so we can just say db instance and then the data so let's say the note it should be the note now let's try it should work so if we click here note one and save note it should be here so if we refresh this it will be here you see we are having this database in database collection name of notes coming from here and we are having this data of note one that's fine i guess we can add the note two as well it will be there if we refresh this we should get note 2 okay you see we are getting note 1 and note 2 with different ids now we have to read data from this collections so we can just say get the docs with an s to get all the documents and we will use it in a use effect hook so this will run when our project mounts or loads so let's create the use effect hook
So this array is called dependency array, the second parameter in the use effect. If it is empty, it means it will only load when our project is loaded for the first time only, not second, third re-renders. Re so we will just use get docs and I guess it takes only this database instance and it will return some data. So let's make this doc. So just console.log this doc. Let's see what we get. So open the console now. We should be getting our data. Not one good, but we are not getting our data. So we have to use, wait a second. Okay. We, so we can just map it out. So we need docs and we need to map it further. So data or docs dot dot docs. Wait, make it data to avoid confusion. Data to docs dot map it will take one more field or one more parameter so remove this and just say mm, let me okay wait we can do this like also this also so it will take one more parameter called let's uh, make it item so item and if we return this item, let's see what we get. Okay, I guess we don't have to use console log. Or what is the error expected? Wait a second. Okay, what is happening here? data dot docs fine then we will have to map it dot map let let it take an item here fine it's taking okay some missing brackets or semicolons or whatever so we will just return this item let's see what we get in the console it refresh the page now Okay, we are getting two items, but we need the, what we need, we need the document, wait a second, what is inside this ref, we have ref, okay, I guess, so we are returning this item, item dot, let's say document. refresh okay it's undefined it means we're not getting that <clears throat> user data we have metadata document fire store key hmm. I guess we have to return it like this. So return an object of item dot document. Let's see what we get after this because I'm forgetting. Okay. We are getting this, but it's empty. If we return just the item, Okay, now we are getting it, but still something is wrong. So we can just use item dot data. Let's see what we have here. Hmm. So we are getting two array objects, but they are empty. I guess we have to use this. Now we are getting it. Note one and note two. <coughs> Plus, let's add the IDs as well. So just say ID which will be item dot id you will get the ids as well for all these two fields note one and note two now we have to store this inside our uh, what is it the state which will be set notes array so we simply set it like this close the console 
and uncomment these two uncomment this code blo uh, block of code objects are not valid okay we have to use note note dot note then it will work because the key name is note here you see we have now two notes here and uh, so we are using this get docs inside our so let's create one function here it will be called get data and move all this code inside this get data function then we will call get data use effect in the use effect look like this and it's preferable to use async await here so this should be a sync function and uh, okay we don't need this this should be await get data await isn't allowed in non async function wait a second i guess we don't need this i think i will try it now it's fine so did there's a reason we get did this move this get data outside this sorry get docs outside this use effect hook because now we can use the function of get data when we add our doc so we can just set then when the add is complete we can just say or call this function called get data so now let's try click add new note let's add a note 3 here save note you see we have this note 3 but the problem is the title is empty i guess we have to add okay 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 fine okay i think what is the problem if we add note 4 the title name is not coming here so note dot note wait 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 notes array dot map I think wait. What if we move it at the top? <sighs> okay, let's see what can we do here. Let's search for a sync await in next JS. <clears throat> not here let's say using a sync await in xjs code we need so let's see a sync function i think it's right but not working why Okay, let's wait, await, that response, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, the reason it's not working is, we have to use await here, not there, I guess it works now, fine, let's add note 5, save note, okay, this doesn't work, I guess, Okay, it takes some time. Okay, what is this? Note 6. Save. It's not cutting, coming here properly. Hmm. So in this get data, we are saving the note here. What if we remove? Well, I guess I don't need this here. That's why it's causing some problems. So now let's create note okay we just delete all these documents here or the collection then we will try again refresh 
लेट्स एड सम नोट वन नोट वन सेव नोट इट्स हेयर लेट्स एड नोट टू इट्स हेयर बट द नोट वन शुड बी एट द फर्स्ट देन द नोट टू so what we can do is if we see not array okay we will do it in the last so let's add now note 3 it comes at the first so we can sort this array as well so just wrap it into an small bracket and they then just say sort let's see what happens so we need to sort it in ascending order so sorting an array in js mosquito sa fruits dot sort apple banana mango according to name what if we reverse it we can also revert this or reverse it okay now it's fine the array is now reversed we have note 1 note 2 and note 3 so we can add note 4 it will be on the fourth position see here so if we remove this sync await let's see what happen because we are having some performance issues note 5 okay 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 note 5 is at the top note 6 what is happening what the hell is this okay if we remove the async await from here refresh the page it's not in any order so how do i or how do we determine the order of the class names here please charge my mobile sorry my watch is saying to please charge so let's add note 1 now note 1 let's add note 2 okay fine let's add note 3 let's add note 4 but note 4 is not getting added properly here if we add note 5 what is the problem here huh? note 4 is here but not note 5 that's some different thing note 6 let's refresh this let's see the order here <clears throat> note 4 is the top but why so we can sort it so let's sort them sort okay not like this we have to sort when we are getting data so we can just say okay wait 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 that's the problem i guess get data okay we are okay 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 let's try to sort them now let's refresh still it is not in the proper order so we will add sorting functionality later in detail so let's leave sort now so that's done now let's implement the functionality of this id so every node has an id you see this 4r w whatever so we have to send the id when we click this edit icon so create a function const get id 
then we will run the function of get id on click of this icon so on click and we will send the id to the top so to send the id we will just say note dot id okay wait i have to check the console layer i think i think we have the id because we are reading this id here fine so we'll send it into this function called get id let's receive it here id now if we console dot log this id and if we check open the console let's click the id of node 4 getting this id not 1 not 2 3 4 5 so we are getting all these ids here so i will use the ids to edit the fields from firebase so we can edit the name we can edit description later when we add it so to edit the fields we need one more thing here which is called doc so import doc from firebase firestore and we will create a collection to the document to specific collection say const let's say collection by id equals to it will take this document so i am forgetting this too so let me check edit in firebase firestore add data and manage data so let's see add data add data These are the old documentation for Firebase, so we can't use that. Okay, doc. Yes, so we have to use the collection. The collection is this DB instance. So put it here. Then that's all. Then. Then, then, then we are have to do what we have to do. So we have paste it here. Okay, DB doc update a document. Okay, this is it. So we have this. Okay, we have DB. Why does the DB here? DB is the database. So we have to use this database here, not this database instance. So we have database. Then we have this cities so what is the cities so i guess cities is the collection name so for our case for a uh, for our for our for our for us it's notes so put notes here then we have dc what is the dc the data to be data to edit the field to edit so we have to use what is the field name the field name is note so let's see what we have here okay i think set the capital field of the city to dc of the wait set the capital field of city dc wait update so update doc not update doc okay we have also have to use update doc so let's Im let's import that update doc so we can just say update doc then this collection by id then i guess that i have to pass the new data but before that we have to get this 
not forward in our input when we click this edit button <sighs> okay so that's something first let's comment out this clicking this button should send this note for to this title here so clicking this button clicking this icon of edit so we have to send the note dot what is it uh, note dot note note dot note let's receive it here uh, 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 not like this Already it's happening complete so we will just set the note here else well so we will set note to note so only let's try to see what happens click note for edit you see it's here now we can use the mm, now we can use the new note to update our note here so uncomment this and we can just say note equal to note we don't need this edit or cons sorry console.log so i guess it's now done so let's try now refresh the page click edit note but first okay that's the problem so okay we have to do this also so when we click this edit button edit button this ed input button should show input box so where is it input set input visible to true here wait a second we are doing some mistake here we are not using this id okay id should be like the last here click note 4 here if we make it as note 5 save note okay 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 we have two notes 5 here if we refresh this so let me see note 4 note 1 note 2 note 3 note 5 we have two notes 5 because it's not updating it's creating a new field hmm. update doc get id wait a second that's because we are using this save note button that saves the note so what we can do is create one more state here so const is update set is update use state so it will be false initially then when we click this edit button this should be true edit means clicking this get id function make this as true then copy the state of where is it okay is input is update and add a new note we will use this save note button here so when we when if this is true this is update we will show something or else we will show some other thing in else block just like we do in if else so we can say update note here see refresh we will have a save okay is update is is update is is update is false so if it is true okay we have to change the make this as update and make this as add then it will work clicking this button this will change to update note you see and we will see our text here in the text input field but we have to change the function as well so just say is update if it is true we will show some button 
or else we'll show some other button based on the condition so if our subject is true we will show the delay we will show edit button so make this as edit then save and we need to create one more function for edit note so const edit note then replace the edit note function with sorry save note function with edit note in this edit note block here so it's done now we have to move uh, all these things here all these update things to update when we click this update doc we have this id wait a second id hmm so i guess we have to create one more state for id so let's create it so const id set id use state it will be empty null state because it will be a number then we will set id here so just say set id as id clicking this should set the id to our id then we have the note here note so note uh, wait save note so we are setting the note here and then we are setting the note of state here fine i guess it should work now let's try let's try to edit this note called note 4 so let's make it note 5 edit note if we check this or refresh this the first should be note 5 you see it's now note 5 so we have to call our input sorry we have to call we have to call our get data function now after update now let's see if we click this note 1 and change it to note 2 should work you see it changes to note 2 and same as before we have to set the set note as empty string when we update edit note head like this so if we click note 5 here and note make it note 10 this should disappear and this should be note 10 See it's now happening. Our edit function is now working. Edit function. Last thing to do, just make this as update. Up date note. Okay, update note. Now let's add some new note here. Let's say or delete this collection first. We will start from the beginning. The workflow. So if we now refresh the page, let's add a new note. Let's say note uh, one, save note. It's being saved here. Let's say note two, save it here. Note two has been saved. Note three. Let's now try to edit one. Let's make this. Note one two important import and note one update. Now it has been edited properly. You see, like this. If you refresh, it will be here persisting. The changes fine. Now let's add this React Cool package in our project for the. note itself so we have a title here but we need the text field for the note itself so let's add them just type and then install react quill and enter to install it and then import this react quill at the top here in our ever.js file we also need to import the css so do that as well then we have to return this here just like this react quill and this here so let's return it where we are adding the new node where we have this text field of enter the title i think it's here 
so just add it here after the input okay it's been ha it has been added wrap it in a div first i or guy guess i think we need to create let's create one more div then wrap it inside this save give this div a class name of let's say styles dot uh, react query let's add the class name here now so we need some margin just say margin just 20 pixels or one rem fine now we can add a text here we can make it bold we can make it italic underline we can have lists here list one list two item three like that so all of this <coughs> all this is done now let's create one state to store the state of this new text field for the app so it should be note let's make it note description set note description use state let's make it an string then we need one function so let's create it it should be here const add description or add esc so if you look in this documentation we have an on change event on react query one prop so we can just say on change on change we will just pass the function set description here add description here this new function that we created so now okay we have added it here here second prop is called value which contains the state which takes the state the state name is wait the state name is node description so put it here it's empty initially so it will be empty value now let's set the state in this function which will take a value parameter as you can see here it will take a value then we will need to set the value in this node description field save it now let's check let's create a new node so let's say node 1 let's say this is node 1 click save node if we check or you can see we are getting this node 1 here let's check the firebase firestore database here we are having the note okay we need to save this new state in this add doc as well so note description note description we can also clear it out when we save the note just like we did with set note we are setting it to empty so we need to set this set note description to empty as well here so make it empty so the fields will be empty when we save a new note so let's save another note so make it note 2 let's add some data this is note 2 save note you see both are now empty this title field and this description field but it will be here note and note description and you will see we are getting this p tags around the note because it saves the tag so if we add so let's say let's add node third or node three let's make it to this is node three let's make it bold and then save if you check here it we are having this node three but we are having this strong tags around our text it means we can render out all the all this description so we will have to render it in some thing differently somewhere differently so we will just say let's create a div here so div and it will have a value or property called 
set okay wait what is that let me see set dangerously is yes. say dangerous danger yes we will have to use this property because if we just type note dot note description we will get all the tags here you see these two tags but we don't want that we need this uh, new property or other property called mm, where is it where is it <coughs> set dangerously dangerously set html mm. so where is it this is here so div dangerously dangerously set html and it will contain our data inside so we don't need this p tag and second and first whatever it is we need this node description so node dot node description then just make it in a single line this div now let's check so we are see the the second node this is node 2 it is in just p tag but this third node it is bold so it is an bold tag strong bold tags if we add a note 4 let's say note 4 let's make it a list so let's say this is or just make it item 1 item 2 item 3 save note you see in this fourth note we are having item 1 item 2 item 3 as a list so it is rendering out the list automatically and uh, okay so if we edit this field we are not getting the data here so let's add them so on this edit note so we are setting this note to okay wait let me check what i am doing here so on click of this edit note not edit note this this where is that that emoji okay this emoji not emoji this icon it icon so we are sending the note id and note dot note so let's send this note dot note description as well so it should be note dot note description wait what was the function let's check the function first get id let's save it so let's say note description or note dac then we will set this set note description to this new field which is called note dac so it will set automatically when we click this note so let's try it now click this note 4 so we are getting all the items click note 3 we are getting this note 3 here so note 1 it has no value of no no value of description so we leave it and note 2 is simply html sorry is simply p tags if it make it bold and update note so let's update the note now so we need note description and the note description here then save if we update the note you see it has now been turned to bold also we need to clear out this description react quill text field so let's clear it out so if we save now it will be automatically cleared so let's say this is note 3 and okay note note 3 note 5 and this should be note five then if we click update note wait we don't have to update we have to create it so it will still work don't worry <sighs> now let's add the delete icon for delete operation so just go to that react icons here open that library so we need the delete icon here so just type delete so we will use this ai field delete to so copy it and import it just like we did with edit icon fine now we have to use us to use it 
so just copy this icon and paste this field icon here so let's check so we are getting these two icons one for edit and one for delete so we don't need this function so just remove or comment out this function just for now we might be able to use it later so in this edit icon class name maybe we need this margin of 5 pixels let's see now it's fine okay i think we have to let's add some color as well so color they should be mm, red okay red is too much let's use this color and the same color here as well fine so we have now two colors now let's create a function for delete so just like edit we will just just like the edit function we will have a delete function so edit note here is it is we will just name say const delete note fine so we need this collection id here so put it or let's do something put it outside the scope of the function let's put it here then we can reuse it anywhere we want so we don't need this here because we already had that save okay cannot treat property of undefined database Okay, wait a second. Line number twenty-two. Database. Uh, uh, what is this error? Okay, okay. We need this ID, so I guess we have to use it here only because it contains an ID field. Fine. So, just put it here, and. we need to use this delete doc function let's import that so delete doc let's break this down all the imports from firebase firestore fine save this so we have the collection here collection id then we will use delete doc delete doc it will take this collection id i think collection by id so let's try it now but we need this delete doc function here so delete doc just uncomment this and put get id so get id is being used for okay we need the delete function here not get id so put delete function and we just need to pass the not id i think not the other properties because this delete doc will take a id so it has database already and we are passing this database collection by def id here in this delete doc function okay now let's try but then we need to create one then statement so this then we will execute it after we delete a file or delete a property and we will use this get data function to update our database in react app so now click delete this note one okay cannot treat property of null index of okay fine what is this error i guess i have to see this two delete doc fire store because who will remember all these things if they are on the website any website or any documentation delete fields it's here so we need the db fine we need the name we need the okay await update doc okay update doc deleting collections Okay, okay. Where is it? 
okay this is the one delete doc db doc delete doc doc fine database name and this dc which is called id but why it is not working here cannot create property of null okay 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 fine we need to receive this id here that was the problem now let's try click this delete note one you see it has been deleted properly click this delete note three deleted note two deleted and note four deleted let's create one new note a fresh note so let's say note uh, one let's say this is note one if we save note it should be here this is note one fine we are getting this here <sighs> if we click edit it should be here hmm that's fine now i guess so we have this note one and note one we can edit it and add one more or other data as well so this let's say hello i am note one if we save our update note they should be updated so bravado bravo it's working now as expected so I guess that's all about how to create an Evernote clone using Next.js, Firebase and React icons with React Quill as well plus model plus FCSS or SAS. So now I'm logging out. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All right. Bye bye.